is good everybody welcome back to another my damn toys video tonight i'm gonna be doing my extreme rules 2018 full show review <laughs> Alright guys, getting straight into things, I'm not going to be covering the pre-show. Sanity did, however, beat the New Day in a tables match. I'm very glad that Sanity did pick up that victory, but uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. So now that we've covered that, guys, let's get into the main show. So to start off the main show, guys, we had the Raw Tag Team Championship match between the Deleter of Worlds versus the B Team. This was nothing more than just your typical Raw Tag Team match. You know, this feud has been literally nothing. Nothing about this has been very interesting, you know, besides Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel dressing up like the, the leaders of worlds they've literally won every single match against matt hardy leading up to this and uh, at the end of it guys we have brand new raw tag team champions in the b team so the deleters of worlds are no longer undefeated they have lost their raw tag team championships and uh, we have new tag champions in the b team so the b team walk out of extreme rules and pittsburgh with the Raw Tag Team Championships. Very unfortunate, and I did not expect this at all. Uh, I pretty much believe the Raw Tag Team Championships are absolutely worthless, guys. I mean, it, it was proven at Mania when Braun Strowman had to use Nicholas as his partner, and then it continues here all the way down to Extreme Rules, and this division just continues to be crap. Next up, we had a singles match between Finn Balor taking on Constable Corbin. Finn Balor was in a very fresh silver gunmetal gray attire. I liked it very much. This match was pretty much just like the first one, guys. Literally nothing to it. You know, they had some back and forth. Nothing too, too special in this matchup. Your typical Raw singles match, in my opinion. Uh, Baron Corbin went for the end of days. Finn Balor reversed it and then he rolled up Baron Corbin to win one, two, three. You know, this keeps Baron Corbin looking strong with Finn Balor getting the cheap victory. I hate this. Finn Balor should have absolutely won clean. I hate the direction he's in, guys. He, he literally... He just desperately needs to get a title push and get big push. I want, you know, the Demon Finn. I want Serious Finn. I want Incredible Finn back. And I am just hating all the storylines they keep putting him in. We cut backstage and we have Kurt Angle in an interview segment. He says he has some important news regarding the Universal Champion Brock Lesnar. He says that he has talked to Brock and Paul Heyman. And he says that Brock must come to an agreement on when his next championship defense is or... He has to show up on Monday Night Raw, or he will be stripped of the Universal Championship. We got a huge pop. Everybody was chanting yes, you know, a big thing. It is clear that everybody does not like Brock Lesnar, guys, so... I don't know. Whenever he drops the title, I think that it's going to get a huge pop no matter who it is. I, it is just clear that the guys or the WWE Universe is not feeling Brock. They're ready for him to go away. But, uh, yeah, we actually have some info on Brock Lesnar. Cut to the SmackDown side of things backstage, and we have Team Hell No and the Bludgeon Brothers getting in a fight backstage. Uh, Team Hell No was getting assaulted. Uh, Daniel Bryan was thrown into a garage door. Kane got his leg smashed in a door by a hammer from Eric Rowan. So, uh, you know, Paige and some referees come over and she's like I need some medical help over here right now and you know they're checking on him and this totally made me think you know Kane's no there's no way Kane's competing tonight maybe Daniel Bryan's gonna have a surprise tag team partner and we would later find out what would happen next up we have the Smackdown Live Women's Championship match between Carmella and Asuka and my god I did not care about this match guys I mean just Carmella's awful as champion I cannot stand James Ellsworth but uh, this match was pretty much nothing. It was over in like five minutes. Uh, they did a little bit of nothing around the ring. Then Carmella uh, got beat up to the outside. Asuka gets back in the ring after James Ellsworth had tried to unlock the door of the cage. Tried to climb down from the shark cage. And he, you know what, he got stuck. His freaking bandana or whatever got stuck. He was hanging upside down. I thought it was an accident at first, but it was clearly a work. Some crew members get in the ring and they're trying to unhook him and help him out and stuff. And then Asuka gets in the ring, starts kicking the crap out of him and stuff, just beats him up. And then Carmella comes from behind, shoves her face into the cage, pins her at one, two, three. Carmella is still your terrible SmackDown Live Women's Champion. This is just awful. I'm so sick of Carmella and her title reign, and James Ellsworth, I wish they would move on. Asuka has been booked to look like an absolute moron, just keeps losing and losing and losing. Very upsetting, and I just hate this for Asuka. She deserves way better. She should have been champion since Mania after beating Charlotte and remaining undefeated, but you know what? F it. I, I don't care. This division's terrible. Just as terrible as the Raw Tag Team Division. So, uh, yeah, we're moving on to the next one. Next up, we have the United States Championship match between my boy Jeff Hardy taking on Shinsuke Nakamura rocking the black pants on this occasion at Extreme Rules. 
This matchup I was looking forward to so much, guys. I was like, Shinsuke and Jeff Hardy, this is some good stuff. Take my money. And then they disappoint us, guys. The match starts, or before the match even starts, referee's not looking. Jeff Hardy gets low-blowed by Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke turns around and acts like, you know, I didn't do anything. The ref's like, what happened? Shinsuke's obviously like, I don't know, whatever, whatever. And then the bell rings. Kinshasa to Jeff Hardy. One, two, three. That's the match. Literally like two seconds long. Very disappointed in that. I thought that was absolute crap. Um, I just am not a fan of that, guys. I really wish they would have let Jeff Hardy go. But anyways, your new United States champion is Shinsuke Nakamura. Shinsuke would be celebrating in the ring, you know, uh, after the matchup. And then, bam, my boy Randy Orton does return. He comes out to the ring. Everybody's like, oh, snap, Randy Orton is back. He's about to beat the piss out of Shinsuke Nakamura. What is about to happen? And then he goes up to Jeff Hardy, gets his legs, pops him in the nuts, and walks off and just leaves Shinsuke Nakamura there. So I don't know if this is a heel turn. I hope it is. You remember before he took a break, he uh, told Jeff Hardy he was coming for him and it sort of, sort of showed signs that he was going to do a heel turn on Jeff Hardy. And then he does this here. So hopefully we get a heel Orton, guys. I'm super hyped for SmackDown Live to see if my boy has turned heel and we're going to get a much more entertaining version of Randy Orton. I also loved his attire tonight. It it was like a silverish blue color. It was like a really silverish, grayish, bluish ish ish color. So I am I was enjoying that. And yeah, Randy Orton's back. Very excited for it. Uh, even though this match was a disappointment, I wanted to have them go, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. But Randy Orton is back, but that does not, you know, distract me from the fact that this match was not a match. Next up, we have the steel cage match between the Monster in the Bank, Braun Strowman, taking on Kevin Owens. And uh, this wasn't very much of a match, guys, but holy crap, it was very entertaining. I found myself very interlocked. This was definitely the best match thus far, uh, this far in the night. You know, Kevin Owens did a lot of cool stuff like Kevin Owens does. One of my favorites in the company, hands down, guys. He's just so entertaining to watch. He proved it again tonight. He's just an absolute beast. But, uh, you know, they had some good back and forth. You know, uh, Braun Strowman was like, you say fight anyone, but you're a coward. You won't fight me. I thought that was great. Then Kevin says, F it, goes right at Braun. They were hard-hitting for a while. Then the big moment came when Kevin Owens would handcuff Braun Strowman to the turnbuckle. So he handcuffs him to the turnbuckle, starts beating him up. He would get choke slammed, get back up. Braun still can't get out of the handcuffs. Uh, Kevin Owens tells Braun Strowman to suck it, DX style. Blows Braun Strowman a kiss, CM Punk style. Climbs to the top of the cage, about to escape. Braun would then break the handcuffs loose. Climb up to the top of the cage and throw Kevin Owens off of the top of the cage through the announce table. My God, what a spot that Kevin Owens took. I thought that was amazing. Kevin Owens may be written off TV now. I don't even know. But my God, what a freaking spot. And just hands and just clapping for Kevin Owens, guys. What a great spot. What a freaking champion to do that. And I found this match very entertaining. I was very entertained the whole time. That's the whole point. And I was very engaged for this. And he hit the sh out of that announce table, guys. My goodness. But uh, I enjoyed this match a lot. Kevin Owens does win. He does win. He beats Braun Strowman in the steel cage match. Thank God, even though it was uh, at the hands of falling 30 feet or whatever it is. But Kevin Owens does win. Next up, we have the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between Team Hell No and the Bludgeon Brothers. Daniel Bryan would, you know, make his entrance by himself. I thought for sure, guys, before Randy Orton, before Randy Orton, came out during that U.S. title segment. I was like, okay, well, Kane's going to be written off TV and Randy Orton's going to return and help Daniel Bryan. I don't know. I just that, that was just the thought that went through my head. But um, that did not happen. Uh, Daniel Bryan came out and fight alone. It was like a handicap match. Bludgeon Brothers versus Daniel Bryan. Uh, again, nothing special about this match, guys. It was a regular SmackDown match. Nothing too, too exciting. Um... Uh, uh, you know, it was really nothing. You know, Daniel Bryan ended up getting beat up by the Bludgeon Brothers later on. Then out comes Kane. His music hits. He's got a boot on. He walks out of the ring, gets the hot tag, hits a couple choke slams. Luke Harper, he uh, was trying to counter Kane. He kicks Kane in the wrong leg. He doesn't even kick him in the injured leg. And then Kane sells the injured leg. Thought that was a little botch right there. Um, but besides that, this was literally nothing to me. I really didn't care. I'm sick of Team Hell No for real. Uh, I hope this just moves on and we get Daniel Bryan in a very important role going into SummerSlam. Hopefully versus, uh, I don't really know where he goes from here, but it looks like he's probably going to be still engaged in this 
but uh, I guess we will see. But the Bludgeon Brothers do retain. Thank God. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Big Dog taking on Bob in a match that I did not give a flying crap about going in, guys. I did not have high expectations for this match at all. Thank God this match did not main event the show, or this match probably would have been pooped on, but they made the right decision, and they uh, sent this match out when they did. I think it was good place in the card for this matchup. I was not looking forward to this match at all. It was very slow in the first five to ten minutes. You know, I wasn't very invested, but then, you know, the, the momentum started picking up. Their chemistry was pretty good, and I found myself enjoying the hell out of this match by the end of it, guys. Bobby Lashley taking that freaking bump from over the top rope all the way to the floor. I don't know how his collarbone and shoulder did not just, just get destroyed into powder, but somehow Bob was fine. Uh, he literally dropped so freaking far and landed on his shoulder, guys. I thought he was done. It was hard to watch on replay multiple times, but Roman Reigns gets pinned clean by Bob. Bob Lash. Bob Lashley pins Roman Reigns. One, two, three. I predicted this. Uh, I think there are rumors going around that, uh, Vince McMahon wants to build sympathy for Roman Reigns. He wants the crowd to feel bad for Roman Reigns, to, to you know, like, feel for Roman Reigns that, oh, he can't get it done, he can't get it done. They want, you, they want the universe to feel bad for him, and I don't think anybody felt bad, guys. I think everybody was popping for the match, and they were very excited that Bobby Lashley won, so I don't know. Uh, that was definitely Bobby Lashley's best match since being on the main roster. He did a uh, belly to belly up to Roman over the announce table. I was very, very excited uh, for this match by the time it was over, guys. I did not expect anything from this matchup, but they shocked the hell out of me, and I'm very glad that they did. And uh, yeah, I, I, I was completely shocked. Enjoyed this matchup somehow. I don't, I don't even know what to say. Next up, we have the Raw Women's Championship match between Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax. You know, this is an Extreme Rules matchup. The only only Extreme Rules matchup on the entire card, believe it or not. Thanks, WWE. But Mickie James and Natalia would be out there. I don't even know why Natalia and Mickie James were really out there. But Mickie James was in Alexa Bliss's corner. Uh, Natalia, for some reason, in Nia Jax's corner. Obviously, just to balance things out. But anyways, these guys went at it for a little bit. So a few weapon spots. There was one point where uh, Alexa was kept... Or Mickie kept throwing weapons at Alexa to use on Nia. But, uh, you know, she obviously couldn't use them because Nia was right in her face. So she kept trying to use them. Nia would block it and then throw it into the ring. That went on. She did a little uh, flapjack onto the uh, steel trash can to Alexa. They all went back and forth. Weapons, weapons, weapons. Uh, Alexa Bliss, I wish she would tee off more when she uses her weapons. I feel like she does it too softly sometimes and stuff. But uh, anyways, Ronda Rousey would eventually jump the barricade and chase after Alexa. She beat the crap out of Mickie James, by God. Uh, and uh, they beat up Nia Jax with more weapons after Mickie James beats uh, Ronda Rousey with a kendo stick. Ronda Rousey would then uh, be out for the match. And then Alexa Bliss would hit Nia Jax in the stomach with a chair very softly. DDT her head onto a chair very softly and retain the championship. Uh, I do not like this feud. I, I'm so sick of these two fighting. I'm so sick of just, I just want Ronda Rousey versus Alexa Bliss. Let Rousey get the championship and let's see what we can do going forward. But anyways, re, uh, Alexa Bliss does retain the Raw Women's Championship. Up next with the WWE Championship match between the phenomenal AJ Styles taking on Rusev Day. Rusev and Aiden English by his side. Thoroughly enjoyed this matchup. I mean, what do you expect? AJ Styles taking on Rusev, two of my favorites in the company. Aiden English is a great sideman to Rusev, and I absolutely enjoyed this one. You know, uh, after they got out of first gear, it was nothing but just a great matchup, great uh, back and forth between these two. I thought it was an excellent one. I, I loved the finish. I loved how, how strong that Rusev was booked. He looked great. Uh, I love that it took, you know, a turnbuckle shot in the corner as well as a 450 splash as well as a phenomenal forearm. So they definitely made Rusev look strong in this loss, and I appreciated this match a lot. Uh, one of my favorite matches of the night, hands down, and uh, the finish obviously came when Aiden English undid the turnbuckle. Uh, AJ Styles got out of the way. Rusev would end up hitting the turnbuckle instead of AJ Styles. He would then hit him with a 450. He kicked out of that, but then uh, uh, Aiden English got drop kicked 
took out Aiden English that he could not, you know, interfere in the matchup. AJ would hit Bruce with a phenomenal forearm and win the matchup. And that is your WWE Championship match. Again, I enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, good stuff. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the 30-minute Iron Man match between the Intercontinental Champion Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins. Drew McIntyre, obviously, in the corner of Dolph Ziggler. This one did not go as, you know, as I thought it would. You know, they had a lot of falls very early on. The first 10 minutes of this thing, they had, like, six falls or something like that. It was very crazy. Seth Rollins started out the match up 3 to nothing. Ziggler would then come back and tie the thing 3-3. They would have back and forth, back and forth. Ziggler would take the lead with a cheat on the ropes going up 4-3. Then Seth Rollins would finally get the tie, and then uh, he hits a curb stomp with literally like four seconds left. He cannot make the cover. Therefore, the match is over. Dolph Ziggler retains the championship. Kurt Angle comes out, however, and is like, no way, bro. We're not ending it like this. We're not going to end in a tie. Then out comes, uh, you know, ring the bell, next fall wins. Uh, then Drew McIntyre would appear on the ropes, distract Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins would hit him with a knee. Zigzag, one, two, three. Dolph Ziggler wins like 10 seconds after Kurt Angle left. So I don't know, man. I thought Dean Ambrose for sure was going to return and, you know, do a heel turn or something. I thought for sure Dean Ambrose would be at this show. Uh, that's the reason I thought that, you know, this was the main event. I thought for sure that Dean Ambrose was going to return just because this match was main eventing. Just be if, uh, since Dean Ambrose did not return, I feel like the WWE Championship probably should have went on last. But anyways, the crowd totally hijacked this match, guys. Them doing that stupid Royal Rumble countdown every single minute and then going eh, or whatever at the end, that was totally annoying to me. I did not enjoy that. If you personally went to the show and you did that, screw you. I do not like that. That was totally disrespectful and terrible. And uh, they did that way before the match, you know, didn't live up to expectations or whatever. Uh, but I didn't enjoy that at all. I thought the crowd was just trash to me. Uh, the match wasn't as good as I was hoping it would be, but I did enjoy it, especially the last, like, uh, seven minutes or so, and the first seven, several minutes I did enjoy, but, uh, yeah, man, screw the crowd, and that was your show. Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler do get the job done. He retains his Intercontinental Championship. It will be interesting to see for sure if Dean Ambrose returns tomorrow night, possibly, on Seth Rollins after he cuts a promo about not getting the job done, and we'll have a uh, Seth versus Dean at SummerSlam, but... Uh, I don't know who's in line next for the Intercontinental Championship. Probably Drew McIntyre turning on Ziggler and having, you know, that be the Intercontinental title match. I'm not sure. I guess we'll have to see. But Dean Ambrose did not return. The show was lackluster at best, guys. I didn't uh, I didn't think it was that great of a show. You had your pros and your cons, but I literally wouldn't grade this thing above a C minus or C at all. It just, it, it, I don't know. There wasn't a lot of good stuff in my opinion. And uh, that was pretty much your show, but that's going to do it for this entire Extreme Rules 2018 review. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, comment down below what you thought of the show. Uh, definitely look forward to Monday Night Raw tomorrow night. Maybe it'll be better than the past few weeks. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure-related videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.